Hey everyone, this week's tutorial is going to teach you how to make an EV3 program that uses measurements from the encoders and the EV3 motors to help your robot drive in a straight line. So for the first part of this video, I'm going to explain to you how the program that we're going to make today works. In the beginning of the program, we're going to reset the encoders of both drive motors. In this video, we're going to call them motors B and motors C. So we reset them so they're both at zero. And then we start the motors driving. Now, in theory, we should have our motors, if they're set at the same speed, travel the same distance. But because of manufacturing and stuff, um, the EV3 motors sometimes aren't exactly exact. They'll kind of fall out of phase with each other. One will rotate slightly faster than the other. So this program today is going to help compensate for that. How this program works is it reads the amount of degrees that each motor has rotated continuously. And if it sees that one motor has rotated more than another, it's going to power the motor that's slowed down faster, and it's going to slow down the motor that's ahead. And in this way, we're going to keep both of the motors rotating at the same number of degrees at the same exact time by adjusting the power between each of the uh, wheels and the motors and this is all going to be seamless and it's going to help our robot drive in a more straight line. Now I'm actually going to show you how to make this driving straight program. The first thing that we want to do is take out some motor rotation blocks. We're going to take out two of them and we're going to set them to reset and we're going to set the port to whatever our drive motors are. In this video, I'm going to assume that your drive motors are B and C, and that B is your left motor and C is your right motor. That's how this program is going to work. The next thing after that is to take out a loop block. This loop is set for infinity, and I've said this before, don't actually have it set for infinity, otherwise your robot's is going to go forever and crash into something. Set some kind of case to exit the loop but I'm not going to tell you which because that's going to vary based on whatever your specific situation is. So that's a decision you'll make yourself. Anyway, um, moving on, we're going to take even more motor rotation blocks. We're going to put them in here. We want them to measure motor degrees, which they already are, so that's excellent. We're going to set one for motor B and one for motor C. After that, we're going to take a math block put that right after our motor rotation blocks here set it to subtract and what we're going to do is take this block that's measuring the number of degrees on motor C plug that in as the A input for our math block motor B is going to become the B input of our math block and then finally what we're going to do with the result is take a move steering block plug the result of all of this math in as the steering the power you can have is whatever you'd like and we're just going to have this turned on and keep in mind that this only works in the positive direction if you want to go in the negative direction you'll have to flip these two tabs anyway this is the most basic way to do this what you can also do and I recommend you do it is put a, one additional math block before this move steering block change it to multiply and instead take the result of this math block as the A the result of this becomes the steering and in here this B value what you're going to do I've discussed this in some other proportional uh, videos this is going to be your scaling value you can change this to whatever you'd like this is going to be completely arbitrary based on what you'd want it to be based on your specific robot and your specific position um, uh, so I can't exactly tell you what this value is going to be but I encourage you to experiment using different numbers and what this does is it's going to change the severity of the corrections that the robot's going to make. So the higher you make this number, like right now I have it at 2, if I were to make it at 10 as opposed to 2, it's going to make sharper corrections to stay on the line. Or I can make it at, um, put it as 0 0.5, and it's going to make much smoother, shallower corrections. And I encourage you to play around with this number, experiment a little bit, and find what works best for your robot. So anyway, to recap, this is a scalar value, which is going to adjust the severity of the corrections. Here's the completed program. I would very highly recommend highlighting all of this and turning it into a my block. Basically, as I said before, it's going to take the difference of motors B and C, subtract them, um, and after it knows its difference, 
If the difference is um, leaning towards C, it's going to slow down motor C, speed up motor B, so that means turn left. And if motor B is ahead, it's going to do the opposite thing in reverse. That's pretty much how it works. And like I said, it's all proportional. So however far away you are from driving in a straight line, um, if one of the motors gets a lot farther ahead than the other, it's going to make a sharper correction. And that makes everything nice and smooth. Now an important thing to note is if you plan on using this program for an application where you'll be driving straight after you've turned, like for example in an FLL robot, since the motors need to start at the same place after you've done this turn or whatever sequence of actions before you start using this program you want to reset both motors B and motor C so they start on a level playing field if let's say your program goes through a series of actions and when you start this program motor B is already way ahead of motor C when you start this program it's not going to drive straight at all it's just going to speed up motor C slow down motor B and you'll probably just end up driving in circles and what fun would that be so be sure to always reset both motors B and C to zero using a reset block before you run this uh, part of code in any program. Thanks for watching my tutorial this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this every week. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, be sure to submit it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.